virtual private networking is a well known terminology in the context of classical networking many internet folks are well aware of that in the context of uh, next generation networks let's look at uh, how the ngn uh, modifies the delivery and the provisioning of uh, ngn uh, vpn services so we'll start off with the definition uh, basically virtual private networking is a mechanism through which the users are uh, made to interact with each other across publicly shared uh, ip network um, to to exchange data amongst each other in a way as if they are doing it in a private setting so it's a service which is primarily meant for carrier grade ip networks that is a network involving uh, uh, the service provisioning across a certain large demographic uh, coverage um classically uh, when itf defined uh, vpn uh they emphasized on two concepts multi protocol label switching and uh, the border gateway protocol uh multi protocol lab label switching is a mechanism through which the quality of service provisioning can be ensured uh, against the best effort traffic and uh, we know that uh, uh the qos provisioning requires some resource uh, allocation and uh, guaranteed service so this is where mpls comes in Uh, as far as the border gateway protocol version 4 is concerned it uh, like earlier versions or the predecessors of uh, uh, bgp uh, root reachability is a requirement but bgp version 4 particularly emphasizes uh, on the classless inter domain routing uh, for identifying the uh, end end points uh, at the provider's edge routers um classically uh, the definition of vpns has not changed much uh, in the context of um, ngn again uh, the same types are being uh, provisioned uh, we have the site to site vpn uh, where we have a head office uh, and then we have branch offices uh, or we have uh, individuals um, or groups uh, spread over large geographical area such as a gaming community or online research collaboration systems uh so this is where the virtual private net networks are created which connect um different user communities to each other then we have the access side vpn delivery uh, which is primarily meant for an intra organizational uh, workforce here different uh, uh, employees or the mobile workers uh, may access their uh, uh, infrastructure or their intranet um uh, through certain other corporate networks so a uh, work from home is one such example uh, then we have uh, the multi service vpns uh, where uh, quality of service provisioning becomes a more serious requirement because uh, we have uh, multimedia traffic including audio video and text um so here uh, quality of service provisioning needs some guarantees so these are essentially the three broad types of vpns as far as the functionality of uh, uh, ngn is concerned uh, we have two uh, strata the service stratum and the transport stratum uh, we'd quickly look at both of these um, but to begin with service stratum is more close to the uh, uh, user side uh, so here uh, we need to have uh, the application support and service functions which are meant to implement the uh user side uh, uh api configurations on behalf of a certain virtual private network community and uh, uh, certain requests if is made from the client for example one end of a vpn uh, client uh, so it means some kind of uh, membership uh, grant activity has to be executed including the uh, registration of that user Uh, authentication and authorization requirements are fulfilled here then some security provisioning has to be made this is the scope of the service stratum qs provisioning and if the user is mobile then uh, the handoff particularly so soft handoff uh, using mobile ip is uh, uh, the scope of the service stratum uh, if the vpn is allowing multicast uh, traffic delivery amongst the uh, uh, vpn members then a multicast service control mechanism also has to be implemented to allow the uh, uh streaming of traffic to multiple destinations 
Uh, similarly, the join, leave, and partition, if you're interested in isolating the uh, VPN traffic to a limited set of users, then that is also the scope of service stratum. Now let's look at the overall architecture. Here we have, uh, this is the classical NGN figure that we've been seeing so many times. Uh, we've got uh, the application to network interface that allows the applications to talk to the underlying NGN architecture. Here we have the service stratum and the transport stratum. Uh, we, we've talked about the service stratum. Let's quickly also look at the transport uh, stratum. Here in transport stratum, we already are aware of the network attachment and control function and the resource allocation and the uh, resource admission control functions. Um, here, these are now being configured with a virtual private network in mind. So each user would have its own profile depending upon the service subscription. So the transport delivery mechanisms would be as per the user profile. Uh, then the control management functions which are governing the VPN would include the uh, uh, control information that is uh, uh, shared amongst all the members to realize the transportation, including admission, traffic delivery, and then termination of service. So essentially we have uh, these two strata, which are taking care of VPN services uh, in a more uh, micro specified manner. So we look at the user to network interface and the network to network interface as well. Uh, here we see that the management functions of VPN are governed by the network administrators, which are working in, uh, for example, a NOC network operations center. Then on the other side, we have the network to network interface, uh, which is allowing the particular uh, NGN entity to talk to extraneous networks which may be other NGN service providers or which are uh, non-NGN operators.